Common Under Fies is a series whose reputation is as great as its characters. After the revolution that was Common Under Ryuki, it seemed like the franchise was going to go back to basics for the next year, but that couldn't be further from the truth, as the melodramatic nature of the series and its characters left viewers divided on whether or not they liked the show or not. Fies was head written by Toshiki Inoue, who previously wrote Common Under Agito, and boy did he double down on the character drama and mysteries from that show. Some people view this as peak Common Under, and others view it as cruel shock. But this isn't about them, this is about my thoughts on Fies. So let's get into them. The premise of Fies has mysterious organisms known as the Orthodox appearing and disappearing all around Japan, causing havoc wherever they strike. The only way to defeat the Orphanox is with the Ignomatic Fies gear, which only grants its powers to a few select individuals, and one of those individuals is the vagrant Takami Inoue. Through a bunch of hijinks, Takami and his friends Mari and Keitaro all end up living together as they try to live day by day while fighting the Orphanox and try to uncover the mysteries of Mari's past. There's also a second protagonist group we follow throughout the series, a bunch of Orphanox consisting of Kiba, Yuka, and Kaido who start off working for the evil corporation on a smart brain but later defect from them, which leads to the group fighting their fellow Orphanox. To be honest, I am doing a lot of summarizing here because Fies doesn't really get into its status quo until around episode 8, with the episodes before it serving to set up for some reoccurring plot elements and endear us to Fies' characters. I'll get to the characters in a bit, but I think it's important to state that Fies doesn't like to elaborately explain everything in its lore, or at least the parts that Noe doesn't really care about, like who is smart brain exactly outside of a huge corporation, what is the origin of the Orphanox, or where do Fies' power-ups come from? That last point could be attributed to Inoue not really caring for how power-up driven Kamen Rider had become, we even saw this in Agito with how randomly new forms not named G3X were introduced, but the former points, while can be attributed to Inoue's quirky writing style, is still a valid form of telling a story. You don't need to have a grand explanation for everything when that's not the point of the story. Like, do we really need to know the origins of the Orphanox and how they came to be when that clearly doesn't interest the characters and isn't part of the themes of the show? I am definitely going to repeat a variation of this statement when we get to a future season, but the point is, for now, is that Fies is clearly focused on its characters over the plot, so I'm going to critique it for the goals it's tried to accomplish rather than what it doesn't care to accomplish. Speaking of, let's get to those characters already, starting with Takame Inoue, aka the titular Kamen Rider Fies, who is quite a departure from the last three Kamen Rider protagonists we've had, as Takami is initially much more moodier, having a lot more internal conflict about his self-worth as a person and a hero thanks to his tragic past. Takami's character really lends into the tragic tragedy of being a common editor, since at the start of the show, he's wandering around aimlessly, haunted by his past, and even when he settles into a status quo, he has that iconic speech about not having a dream but swearing to protect others' dreams as a common writer. Despite being a much different protagonist at the time, Takumi is a cool guy who, even with his dramatic character development, has quite a bit of funny moments interacting with his fellow castmates. Heck, this goes for Fies as a whole, as it can be a very funny show in between all the operatic tragedies it presents, mostly thanks to entertaining banter between the characters. Kiba Yuji is a main Orphanok of the show and can be considered a rival to Takumi. Hell, he's the first major character we focus on in episode 1. He's been in a coma for two years before the show started and in the meantime was betrayed by his family. When he wakes up, Kiba uses his newfound strength to kill his former fiance and new partner, which gets the attention of Smart Brain to recruit him. With these actions and events, you would think this would make Kiba a bitter, maybe aggressive character, but in reality, he's a chill guy most of the time, even forming close bonds with a couple of his fellow Orphanox. He even gets very close to to becoming good friends of Takumi, but unfortunate events prevent that from ever going anywhere meaningful. Kiba is a tragic guy who's protective of his friends like Takumi, but where Takumi finds his resolve to improve and bounce back from tragedy, Kiba lashes out and indulges in his worst aspects of himself, usually involving killing. Kaido is one of Kiba's buddies who serves as the heartfelt comic relief in the Orphanox sections of the show. I think what I love about Kaido besides his charismatic personality is that he's often seen trying new things like going on dates or trying to be cool, but then they'll just drop it and move on to to the next wacky scheme he has. He's a young guy at a very informative stage of his life, so of course he would try new things and not all of them will stick, and that makes him one of the most entertaining and relatable characters in the series. Then we get to Masato Kusaka, aka Kamen Rider Kaiksa, a controversial figure in the franchise, but more so in a fun jerk way. He is a bastard through and through who causes a lot of miscommunication and conflict due to thinking his shenanigans are for the greater good, something heroic to do. He does occasionally have a valid view of the situation, but it's masked behind his cold cynicism. Something I appreciate about Kusaka is that even in his attempts at vulnerable moments, Takumi will just scoff at him and be like, no dude, you're still being a jerk. Kusaka became such a popular character that he even has his own theme day every year, September 13th, assuming September still exists by the time you're watching this. This is a reference to his input code to transform into Kaiksa, 913. Either way, Kusaka is an interesting evolution of the villainous Kamen Riders that Ryuki started. Vice does have a third writer named Kamen Rider Delta, but he's a bit of an odd 
Oddity, as he has two main users in the show, the villainous Dragon Orphanot, Kitazaki, and Siyuji Muhara. Now, this isn't new for Fies, as we've seen the Fies and Kaixa gear being used by multiple users throughout the show up to this point, but it's all in the details where this becomes an odd plot point, as the event that makes Kitazaki stop using the Delta gear is him simply growing bored of it. I guess this could speak to Kitazaki's cockiness, and it is funny, but such a low stakes way to get the Delta gear in Maharu's hands. And as for Maharu, I don't hate him. In fact, I like the idea of his character being one of the most powerful common editors in the season, but unwilling to use the power to its full potential, but it was not presented in an interesting way in the show. To me, he just comes into the series as a background character out of nowhere, and then just becomes Delta a few episodes later. I really wish I could like the Delta stuff more since it has really good ideas, but they were unfortunately executed with not much dramatic force as the rest of the show. This storyline might be the worst of the merchandise gang in the way of Inoue's vision, since outside of an extra hand to help in battles, both Deltas are just kinda there in the overarching story Fies presents. Even with these flaws, there's still so much in Fies to make it a high quality season of Kamen Rider, though for me it's on the same tier as Agito being shows I understand the appeal of, but just don't vibe with 100%. It made me realize I prefer Inoue when he works on Super Sentai or Super Sentai Likes over Kamen Rider. Fies is a show that doesn't hold the viewer's hand in dramatic situations. It's not afraid to beat down its characters to depress husks, but it also knows when to give those characters a ray of sunshine from time to time before beating them down once again. While this vicious cycle repeats until the end of the show, despite this, the messages of the ups and downs of human interaction and how one deals with trauma are really gripping, and if that interests you along with anything else I've said in this video, give Fies a watch. I didn't even get to talk about one of my favorite storylines in the show, being Keitaro's relationship with his pen pal, which is one of the most saddest plot lines in Kamen Rider, yet it showcases most of Fies' messages perfectly. But I'll leave that to you to watch for yourself.